thanks for such a great conversation last week over copyright and myths about copyright. It's always fun for me to see what comes out of the conversations, and you'll notice that I did go back and reply in a number of areas, especially if you had a specific instance or hypothetical situation that you wanted to ask a question, and I thought that I could give you some valuable information. On screen, you see kind of a synopsis of the myths that we discussed last week. There were various conversations of fair use or nuances of fair use, uh, the requirement or lack thereof of a copyright symbol, giving credit and permission to use items, how P2P or peer-to-peer -peer sharing fit into the copyright conversation, work for hire, and even one of my favorites, the Freedom of Information Act, and how that relates to government agencies and classified leaks, all that fun stuff. Some of the things I wanted to talk about in depth a little bit more, otherwise I'll just refer you to my replies on those in-depth discussions, were how video services like YouTube address copyright. And that is they've spent so much time and so many legal brains working out various copyright agreements. What we get out of that as end users are restrictions, on if something can be played back in a specific country. And I believe Leslie and a few others talked about uh, the role of countries and copyright in their posts. Um, if a video can be played on a mobile platform versus a desktop platform, if it's muted, if the audio is, or if the video is completely stripped out, those are all variations of what Google has reached an agreement with the copyright holders on. So one of the questions that I saw was dealing with what happens if I want to show something in class and I've uploaded a clip to one of these services and then I show it from that service. Well, it's still kind of murky, but for the most part, the services themselves are the ones that are enforcing copyright here. So that would be a tricky area where you would definitely want to refer to somebody with more legal expertise. However, for the most part, using one of those services does let you show it in a classroom or amongst friends. The other thing I wanted to mention though, because this didn't really come out, and that's asking permission. We get wrapped up in some of the rules of copyright and trying to use fair use. But if you need to get permission, it really isn't that difficult depending on what it is or even where it is. Now it might be, but it would be in your best interest to try some due diligence here. The story I like to tell is that of a group of students in iTech 2360 teaching with technology a few summers ago. They wanted to create a comic book of public service announcements using existing comic characters. In order to do this, however, they had to seek copyright permission. So they contacted Marvel and they actually got permission from Marvel with the caveat that we could not show their comic book publicly outside of class. So right now we have a number of these comic books that have been created for iTech 360 printed and hanging on the walls on the third floor here of the education building. That is not one of the comics you'll see because we are honoring Marvel's permission when they said that they could use The Incredible Hulk, we could not print, distribute, or display that comic. But they also contacted Paws Incorporated because they wanted to use Garfield. And that is the name of the organization that currently holds copyright over Garfield from Jim Davis. Now, when they contacted Paws Incorporated, the request went to the lawyer who manages copyright for them. And the lawyer did not immediately grant permission, but instead wrote back and asked for more information about the project and why they were asking for permission. The students then replied back and explained that their instructor requires them to, that it's part of the grade, to which the lawyer was very pleased. He said that honestly, they grant all requests that they get. He cannot remember denying one. He spends more time going after unauthorized use, and that's where the money is. So if you ask for permission first, rather than beg for forgiveness later, this is one case where you probably want to ask up front. You might be surprised at what you find. So with that, let's turn to this week's topic. Please use the links on screen to navigate to the section of the overview you wish to access.